Hello and welcome to this new series that I've been working on. This video is about alcohol and uh, acts as a prequel to uh, psychedelia. Not because these uh, substances and their various effects are uh, connected as substances but in the way that they have been connected for me in my evolution and development as an artist and as a part of my ceremonial practices. Which is why they will be in the same category and playlist because generally it's rare for me to not have one without the other, especially when it comes to psychedelia. But this video will be about alcohol and how it has been with me in the various stages of my life and how it has affected some of my uh, creations and decisions over time and uh, of course what I've learned from those things both in real time and uh, retroactively so let's go to the beginning I didn't really hang out in a crowd in my earlier years. Uh, not that I really ever had to, to the extent that many does. Though I had a moment which we'll return to. Uh, as with many things uh, when I hear about something that seems uh, interesting I have had the habit of uh, searching it out for myself rather than relying on someone else to uh, give me that experience or to have the experience on my own terms rather than what people have predefined the experience to be to go in it with my own mind and cloud it at will rather than start the experience already clouded and uh, while I, I was around 14 or 15 years or so I had only seen brief intoxication of people around me uh, not the blackout kind so uh, I didn't really have any kind of trauma connected to it it was more of a 
positive associations, even though there has been uh, alcoholism in my family for generations on my grandfather's side. And of course, seeing him intoxicated could have been, I know it was traumatic for my mother because uh, she had to grow up with it. Uh, but obviously, I didn't really share that experience. And during my earlier years, uh, while he was alive, uh, until a few years ago when he passed, uh, he was going in between different stages of recovery or relapses. Uh, and at that time I had already <laughs> been through my own roller coasters uh, in life, so once again uh, I've created my own traumas rather than having them being dealt by others. But at the earlier age than uh, maybe let's say between 16 and 17 was when it for the first time started to get out of hand because uh, in my social circles of uh, mainly outcasts or what some would refer to as metalheads uh, drew in crowds of other people that were misfits to other extents like a lot of skaters and other people like that uh, those scenes seems to always be connected somehow and uh, I started having some ridiculous parties which I know wouldn't be something you would expect from someone like me I guess being a recluse more or less <laughs> uh, but uh, that was as I said around 16 years of age uh, a way of m myself to learn my place in the world and how I would be connected or disconnected from other people and it taught me at that early age what I could expect from others and how to see who is my friend for proper reasons and those who would be just my friends for something shallow like what they could get out of being in my circles like access to alcohol or a place or a sanctuary for intoxication which became uh, something that I offered for a while and uh, it was at the later stage of those events that me, me and a few childhood friends were uh, getting deeper into uh, our vices and uh, we were uh, using active charcoal to purify moonshine which 
that sometimes would be ridiculous, ridiculously potent. And um, it was during one of my events that I uh, had my first uh, overdose. Which also led to me getting hypothermia. And having had that experience, opened up a new world to me. It was Not like uh, finding a lock and a key, but rather finding yourself beyond some kind of gate which now was opened. And it was also during that time that I was starting to distance myself from people because I had learned around that time uh, who would know me for shallow reasons and who would know me for a genuine interest. So after that, uh, drinking started to become something more of a personal thing that I would do alone in the forest. Uh, more like a ceremonial practice and that's where that part came into. Uh, my connection between intoxication and uh, creativity yeah. because it was no more uh, simple substance to use to get numb and fucked up but rather a substance to use to uh, enhance uh, different moods, different emotions. And I think that's where the line between alcohol and psychedelia becomes a bit blurred in a beautiful way because at lower doses they can they both share that amazing quality that if you use a lower dose you uh, get the benefits of unlocking certain parts of your mind and your your emotions and how you're connected to them without losing clarity and I think that can be an interesting uh, way to to use alcohol uh, and for me uh, from my personal experience, I found that the morning or the night is the best time 
to use alcohol in uh, creative pursuits. Because it definitely colors your experience and how you perceive different emotions. So if you, like me, are into composing or manifesting something with a very distinct connection to emotions and something else that goes within or beyond you not being numb but simply a bit lucid and aware and having those borders torn a bit adds a different uh, character to uh, the things that you are able to uh, manifest. And then of course going into my other practices of ceremonial painting it uh, becomes even more personal of course by having something like open wounds while drinking wine you were able to between drinking and painting mix the different liquids uh, either in your mouth or with your hands on the skin or in different vessels and it becomes a very immersive ceremony where things are in so many ways connected which like I said uh, creates that connection between psychedelia and mere intoxication and it was a big part of the ceremonies of earlier hypothermia recordings as well before I had any kind of affection for uh, psychedelia or marijuana alcohol was a very achievable way of reaching different states of mind and uh, when it comes to composing and recording it can sometimes be very intense so numbing the self can be a necessity to simply keep going on and I think that's something that I've experienced in life as well many times that sometimes the different experiences that we go through in life can be so intense and overwhelming that becomes natural the the need and pursuit of numbing ourselves even though the intoxication to a large extent actually amplifies 
what you're feeling. At certain doses, it does the opposite. And the problem, of course, is that it requires plenty of practice to uh, distinguish the differences on and in what situations that it's the appropriate substance because in many times it will enhance the the wrong things the the emotions and situations that you're trying to numb and uh, limit will instead be enhanced which of course is why a lot of people get into drama and fights and so on while intoxicated because everyone has a different experience and a different intoxication which in turn fuels the things that they feel and experience and it colors that experience in very distinct ways which is why I prefer solitary intoxication because that is when you can sharpen that dagger and uh, create a more pure ceremony out of the intoxication rather than uh, losing yourself to uh, something more or less closer to uh, a demon and I'm not saying that there is anything wrong with that if you're prepared for it Demons can do glorious things. So glorious that they are in fact often confused with angels. And getting to know these demons or what some refer to as their inner demons can be a very worthwhile pursuit especially if you are in doubt of consulting some kind of mental facility or hospital if you have issues with the world and yourself and your place in it or beyond it a lower dose of alcohol can lead to interesting things but of course it's all purely individual this experience and how you perceive it and then um, of course with time have uh, developed both good and bad practices as we all do and I think many of those of you who have an interest in intoxication think it's a 
of great value to learn more about the process of making alcohol and with that I'm not referring to distillation because that's easy to make mistakes and in most places around the world it's also illegal while making your own beer or wine is usually legal in most parts of the world and to implement that kind of ritual or ceremony in your life is something that I have experienced Yes, uh, it's a very ritualistic practice, the, the brewing process, because it has different stages that are each very specific, and it becomes like a slow dance, just as how I perceive uh, playing piano or guitar or painting and that's what makes alcohol and intoxication something spiritual for me because it's not about Uh, getting out of touch with something but the very opposite to enhance and really run into those intense moments and emotions that uh, these keys will open doors for you but of course as with any substance beware and be prepared to take responsibility because you may find yourself in situations with consequences that may be less than preferable which is something that I've discussed in videos connected to life lover for example and of course that's something that I can dwell more on in a separate video if that's something people would be interested in but it's never something that I would endorse to mix different substances unless you are aware and prepared for these consequences because they will most definitely endanger your own existence and That's not something that I can recommend, though I, from personal experiences, understand that allure and fascination or need to have those experiences and I will return to some of those in uh, another part of this series because this is more of a prequel as I mentioned in the beginning and as I do this as a stream of consciousness kind of thing I of course lose myself in some of the details 
and find different ways to connect these subjects as I go on talking about them and I don't wish to keep you too long in each video because the more I dwell upon these things and uh, think about them I may have too much art breaks quiet and silence and obviously that distracts and deters from the experience for both of us so let's try to keep these segments uh, as focused as possible so that means I'm trying to keep them around this length and rather than trying to cover as much as possible in a shorter time as possible I'm going to take my time because that's how I do things and if you feel that I'm missing something or that there are details that you would wish to know more about let me know in the comments below and I'm more than happy to dive in With that, I thank you for watching and hope that you are having something nice to drink. Take care.